let's talk about why this is the worst kind of road trip you can take. <clears throat> so that happened. This was worse than the dually, dude. Was that a good angle? This night keeps on getting better. Shoot. So now I gotta replace this. We're gonna make this work, I promise. I don't have a choice. Just got a special delivery from a uh, home base here at Slosh Tubs. You just keep that car on the road, you're saving the freaking environment. Only managed to make two semi-truck drivers angry. Well, today I was supposed to be working on Cookie Monster. I just got it all blown apart. I got to pull the motor and transmission out the frame and do a bunch of stuff to it. But uh, today I'm actually working on the Blazer because I'm getting ready to take it on the worst road trip you could take. We'll talk about it here in a little bit. Let me show you what I gotta do to this truck to get it ready. The fuel gauge on my Blazer is reading inaccurately. So I should be at about a half a tank right now and it's showing empty. I checked the wiring for the Dakota Digital Control Box and that is good. Made sure we are on the correct sending unit for this truck, which is the 90 ohm or GM 90 sending unit. So I checked our ground in the back. Now I'm gonna go into the truck and check the wire harness. I already kind of did that, it looked fine. So uh, might just let that one be. There's some other things we gotta do to it. The windshield leaks like crazy. I also gotta recharge the AC, change the oil. I mean, the truck's pretty much ready to go. It's just these couple little things that are driving me crazy. And I really wanna just make sure that I get the windshield taped up. That's the only issue I really have with this truck on road trips is that water coming through and getting all over my electronics and my feet and my carpet and it stinks after a while. See here, we got a, got a good ground. I checked that. We got a good connection at the fuel sending unit. There's a, a couple of wire connectors at the end of those wires you can kind of see. Those are nice and snug. Let's keep moving forward. Checking the ohms at the control box here. That's the fuel sending unit. We're at 20, so zero would be full, 90 would be empty. So that's about a third-ish of the way through the signal. So it should be around three quarters of a tank. Let's plug up our gauges again. Still showing empty. Well, my next step will be to drop the tank, pull the sending unit, see if we have any issues with that. According to the wiring and the signal that I'm getting at the box, I don't think that's the issue, but I don't have the time to do that. So I'm gonna throw the dash back together and work on the next thing. Got the old dash put back together. And uh, what I decided to do was just put it on the GM30 sending unit. So it's not gonna be 100% accurate, but it's gonna be better than the Dakota Digital's flashing that I have low fuel and I can still use my trip to gauge how much fuel I have. I feel like I need to clarify this. So right here, when you have any kind of uh, warning indicators, it'll flash right here to tell you that there's an issue and this is where you read your trip. So I was never really able to see where my fuel was unless I cleared the code out. You know what, it's not a big deal. It doesn't even matter. The windshield leaks like crazy. I got this uh, paint work done. Paint's, uh, oops, cracking off there. Um, couldn't ever get the windshield to seal after they took it out and put it back in. Got a nice big old crack there. And then again, it's even worse on this side. I can almost pull the windshield out if I pull too hard. So we're gonna tape that. Now this is clear tape, so it won't be as obvious what I'm doing here. It's so clear, I can't even see where it starts. Not my proudest moment, everybody. Don't have the means to get this one fixed right now. I mean, from 50 feet away, you'd never know. Here's the other issue, look at this. Bondo cracked up there. We got some rust showing through, and then I, some other splits in the paint. There's more splits over here, but I ain't worried about it. All right, jack her up. We'll go put this wheel chalk in the back. Is it high enough? Yeah, it's pushing up. 
Both of you guys, uh, Wyatt, can you help Walker? I think I got it. Can you go up a little bit more? Yes, Ready? One, two, three, help. go. Go? It's really hard. Yeah. yeah. I got it, Wyatt. There you go. All right, one more big one. I got it, Wyatt. I got it, Wyatt. No. Yes, I got Wyatt. it. Wyatt. Hey, boys. There you go. All right, that's good. Got everything wrapped up in the blazer. Put these guys to bed. Unfortunately, cannot fit anything in the garage on this trip. Okie dokie. See you all in the morning. On the road this morning to a little town called Piggott, Arkansas. So let's talk about it. Let's talk about why this is the worst kind of road trip you can take. Well, my uh, uncle unexpectedly passed away and listen, I don't say that to get sympathy. I'm not, I'm not looking for that. I want to share this road trip experience with you guys and gals, because that's what this channel is all about. Again, good, bad, or ugly. This is what I do. So he unexpectedly passed away a couple days ago, and I haven't seen him for, I saw him last summer, so I haven't seen him for almost a year. Um, but these road trips make you think about a lot of stuff and uh, this is how I clear my head I love hopping in these old cars and trucks and just driving if you break down you break down the worst road trips not one you break down on the worst road trips not the one that uh, you know you get stranded or whatever man it's it's when you have to make the drive because something something bad's happened to a loved one or a good friend and uh, that's why I'm making this 900 mile drive from Daytona Beach, Florida to Piggott, Arkansas. Actually never been to Piggott. Uh, heard it was where Hemingway's wife was born. Maybe we'll check her house out. But I grew up in a small town called Cabot, Arkansas. We moved out to Florida when I was 14, 15 years old and I've been out here ever since. But uh, don't go back and visit nearly as much as I should. So uh, feeling kind of guilty about that. And uh, you know, this is life, man. It sucks, but you try to make the best of the experiences. Gonna go spend some time with family. While I'm in Arkansas, I'm gonna take an extra day or two, ride over to see Mike and Sarah Losh. They own and run a company called Slosh Tubs. Uh, gonna grab some parts for Cookie Monster and then make my way back home. So I'm not gonna be able to work on Cookie Monster this week. Um, I'll be back on that truck next week. But for now, if you guys wanna hang around, I would really appreciate it. I don't know what this video is gonna hold. I don't even know if I'm gonna release it. But uh, let's enjoy the ride to Piggott, Arkansas. But first, let's go to Bucky's. I'm actually not a big fan of going to Bucky's anymore on road trips it's on that side. I can't have too many vehicles. I don't remember which side the gas cap's on. But this one is, uh, this one's not too bad. Plus it's like, I think it's Tuesday. Dude, I don't even know what day it is. Ooh, we'll park right up front. A premium 3.59 a gallon. All right, we got 15 gallons. So that was uh, about halfway full. That was a little off on my math. A lot of you fellers like them beaver nuggets. Give me some of these uh, dark chocolate covered almonds. And ooh, look, espresso beans. Dark chocolate covered espresso beans. Yes, please. Or just getting in the old blazer from uh, Bucky's and... Whoa, would you look at that? 2023 penny. I just keep on that there. Yeah, so our fuel gauge is showing a quarter tank which is wrong man the blaze is breaking next today multiple people stopped me to talk about it normally I can run in and out without issue I don't like Bucky's because it just adds so much time to a road trip now, I stopped here because it's like literally on the way and this one's not real crazy especially it's like Tuesday I think I think I was saying that earlier but I don't like to spend a lot of times at my stops. Like, 
I just want to get in and get out, and with Bucky's, it's like impossible. There's so much traffic around them, so many people. So let's get back on the road and enjoy the ride to Piggott, Arkansas. Gotta watch my speed through here on 75. Them troopers don't play around. You know, I never really get to sit down and talk to you guys. I'm always running around, working on something, thinking about what's next. Something's been bugging me. We have a lot of talk about green vehicles, right? Hybrids, electric cars. A lot of talk about it and this big push to make these electric cars, essentially mandate electric cars. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of issues with that, right? Number one, the power grid's not gonna be able to handle it. But something that I've been thinking about is uh, who's the real uh, green crowd? Who really cares about the environment? That's the people that recycle things, they reuse things. So I've read studies about the emissions on creating an electric vehicle versus the emissions on creating a gasoline powered vehicle and then how long it takes for those emissions to basically equal each other. And the math that this study ran was about 100,000 miles so you got 100,000 miles of driving an electric car, which most people that own electric cars don't drive that much anyway. And if they do go on long road trips, at least as of right now, they're probably gonna rent a gasoline powered vehicle. So call it 100,000 miles to break even because it takes so much more emissions to create the electric vehicle over the gasoline powered vehicle. However, there's something that nobody's talking about. What about the fellas and the fellettes that take an old car, put a modern drivetrain in it from a vehicle that was wrecked and would otherwise be destroyed and continue to operate that vehicle on the road? Number one, the emissions to create the vehicle and the drivetrain have already been realized. So technically, if you buy an old vehicle, and even if you keep the original drivetrain in it, you just keep that car on the road, you're saving the freaking environment. Let that sink in. And I hope the government hears this because we need more old cars on the road. Also, I heard a new study about the weight of the new vehicles. They weigh about 50% more than an average gasoline powered vehicle and the guardrail systems and the roadways we have are not built to handle that much weight of a vehicle so they have like these crash tests where they have electric vehicles hitting guardrails and just blowing right through them like they're a, a semi truck like that's something i didn't think about started watching those videos and i was like oh man now we're going to have to redo all of our infrastructure to be able to handle the electric vehicles, not only the electrical grid, which also still creates emissions because most of the electric power that we get is off of fossil fuels, unless you have a you know, nuclear reactor, which if something happens with that, like that's no harm to the environment at all. Or, you know, like a, like a dam or something that's hydroelectric power, which is obviously very clean energy, but we don't have that stuff over here really in Florida. So, uh, you on that. America, let's get more old cars on the road. The answer is not electric vehicles. I'm just going to tell you right now, and 
You know who backs me on this? Maybe not the whole car part, Toyota. I know a lot of people talk trash about Toyota, man, but the, the leaders of Toyota do not believe that electric vehicles are the way of the future. And they actually, they are the, uh, they are ranked last place in terms of electric vehicle production because they don't believe in it like at all. And they're actually creating vehicles that run off of alternative fuels. And there's also a plant at the southern tip of Brazil that creates uh, synthetic gasoline. That's the word I'm looking for. They literally take each compound out of the environment and then create gasoline with it. It's extremely expensive because it's still in, in testing right now, but I believe Donut Media went down there and they took a Porsche, like a performance car, filled it up with the synthetic gas and they could not tell a difference. It smelled like fuel, but there's zero emissions because all of those elements are already in the environment. I got hope. I got hope that the future is not electric cars. That's my rant. That's something I've been thinking about for a while. If you want to help with the environmental movement, buy an old car and keep it on the road. That's all I'm saying. Well, this drive just got worse. Lauren texted me and she said that Toby Keith just passed away. Had a long battle with cancer. It's very sad. He's been popping up a lot more lately and being more open about his illness. And uh, gosh, man. Carl Weathers passed away a couple days ago. Apollo Creed. This year's starting out a little weird. I was about 270 miles from the last stop, which happened to be Bucky's. But you know what? It's not really busy. I mean, this is like the most dead I've ever seen this place, which is crazy. Took 19.8 gallons. It's $3.31 a gallon for premium here. The Blazers got to take premium because I got some stage 2.5 Texas speed heads, Texas speed heads on a 5.3. But uh, quick pee stop back on the road. Took my shoes off, got some bite. It smells like uh, Cool Ranch Doritos, you know, get that like. Getting ready to go through McDonough, Georgia. Normally this is like standstill traffic, 45 minute delay. But today there's like nobody out on the road. This is the least amount of traffic I've ever had on a road trip and it's awesome. just over three, oh, my dad's calling me, but just over 300 miles on the truck since Bucky's only managed to make two semi-truck drivers angry. Let me get gas here, 359 a gallon for premium. Might have said this before, but a little, little pet peeve I have is going to a gas pump and them asking you like 20 questions before they start pumping the gas. I'm here for one reason, give me the freaking gas. All right, anyway. Peace stop, just gonna grab something to munch on. I got another four hours to go. Getting after it out there. Oh, I thought this was a bug. Just a little leaf. 
You like that engineered vintage grill? It's aluminum. Super nice. Oh, still at 19.2 gallons. Okay, we went, yeah, about 300 miles. Uh, cool. Put that back. Got to re-up on my water intake here. Been limiting. Oh, oh no, oh no, oh. Mmm, that is cold. That would have been nice if it was summertime, but it's not the summertime right now. Got about 300 miles to go, three and a half hours of driving. Second Amendment, if anybody's wondering. I know a lot of, there are a lot of questions that one of the videos I had where I uh, had questionable people around me. Don't worry. I got you. Where's my keys? There. Also went with the uh, fajita chicken and cheese taco. Figured that would be better than McDonald's. I'm telling you, me and McDonald's, we don't go very well together like at all. made it to the old Airbnb. Shh, you hear that? It's like so quiet out here. <laughs> this, this town does not have any hotels and somehow my parents were able to score an Airbnb. So I'm gonna crash here for the night. Dad's coming out to help me get some stuff. Check out with you guys in the morning. That's something we don't really get uh, where we live, and that's rolling hills and quiet. Blazer sustained some damage on this road trip. Got a new rock chip, which is nice. Well, it actually matches the other side. I got that one going to Atlanta. Let's see how our tape's holding up here. Oh, we got some ice. Uh, it's like coming off right there, but other than this little spot, the rest of it looks pretty good. Are you curious? I haven't said hello to you yet. Hi. Looks like you just got a haircut. <laughs> I don't have any food. I'm sorry, bud. Nothing. Just my hand. I could scratch your neck for you. Your chin. <laughs> so the plan today is to go visit my aunt, spend some time with family. I'm going to go pick up my sister from the airport in Memphis, which is two hours south of here. I'm going to try to get some good barbecue. We might try to find a spot on Beale Street or something. I don't know. We'll see what we'll get into. Uh, not really excited about driving through Memphis, but... Uh, you know, it's all part of the road trip. You just got to be a little more careful when you get to a state that doesn't really care about their roads. Yeah, the old Blazer's on a dirt road. Build my trucks to drive them. A lot of you guys and gals probably wouldn't be doing this today. Spent the uh, last little bit with my family. I didn't really want to take any video over there because, you know, it's personal. Still don't even know if I'm going to make this video. But uh, I was supposed to go pick up my sister from the airport in Memphis. She's actually catching a ride with one of her friends and coming out here. So we're just going back to our Airbnb. We're going to chill for a little bit and get ready for tomorrow. Man, it's nice. It's nice having this time with family. Uh, again, I haven't been, I've never been to Pigott, but I haven't been back to Arkansas in years. 
So, uh, just kind of sad. Sad today. Yeah, buddy. Good boy. Good boy. No, didn't like me. <laughs> okay. All right. We're going to give this guy some space. Hey. You all right, bud? You okay? Good puppy. Good boy. Golly. Good boy. Yeah. Got your Main Street in Piggott, Arkansas right here. I love cruising through towns like this. To your right is the Oshkosh Bagosh mural that I got a killer picture in front of. There's a couple of really cool murals around here. Also just saw a tractor cross the street. Well, there's not many roads leaving Piggott, Arkansas, and I picked the right one, so we are officially heading in the right direction to go to Siloam Springs, Arkansas. Um, haven't been filming the last couple of days, just been focusing on spending quality time with family that I haven't seen in, in a long time. And it was nice being able to come to Piggott, Arkansas to see my family like on their home turf, because when we usually meet up, we meet up in central Arkansas, uh, at Mimo and Peepaw's house. And they usually come down and we come up from Florida, but to be here to kind of see where they live and, and just visit with them is very nice. Um, oh, I got this pin from my brother who got this at uh, my grandfather who passed away um, not that long ago. I wasn't able to make that funeral because we were, I got COVID and I wasn't able to make it out. But uh, it's cool, I'm rocking the Razorback, big fan of the Razorbacks. Woo pig! To come up here to the northeast corner, hang out with everybody, and you know, see their home turf was was really nice. And of course, we wanted to celebrate my uncle David. And uh, I just hate seeing family under these circumstances, as anybody does. But we made the best of it, and uh, I'm really, really glad I made the trip out. But now I'm heading due west to Siloam Springs, which is in the exact opposite corner. There's a square body of where I'm at right now. It's about 250 miles, six hour drive. It is very dreary and overcast today, but this drive is supposed to be beautiful. There's no interstate. It's all back roads and highways. And I'm very, very excited, even though it's six hours out of the way. But we're gonna go visit with Mike and Sarah Losh. I gotta grab some parts for them. They run a company called Slosh Tubs and they travel the country making custom parts for cars and trucks. And let me tell you, I'm really excited to work with these guys because not only are they from my home state, but they're also some pretty dang good truck friends of mine. And I've never actually used any of their parts before and I've known them for years now. So we're gonna go hang out with them for a few hours and then we're gonna turn and burn 17 hours, 1100 miles, back home to Florida. It's gonna be a long day, boys and girls. So hang on tight. Let's enjoy this foggy, dreary ride to Northwest Arkansas. Bill, Arkansas.
Welcome to Siloam Springs. This must be the shop. Got a bunch of C10 parts hanging around. Just got a special delivery from a uh, home base here at Slosh Tubs. Mike, what's up, man? How are you, sir? Good, brother, how are you? Sarah, how are you? <laughs> it's always a pleasure. So uh, I just drove 1,250 miles to come pick up some tubs <laughs> from you and some other parts. And uh, I really want to check the shop out. I haven't really walked around it a lot, but why don't you show us around, yeah. man? So this, this is basically our shipping department, my other shop where we do more fab work. But uh, so this is just junk everywhere. Uh, That's a good we thing. we got seat bases. We're trying to build inventory this year and get everything ready to go. So we got seat bases stacked up, yeah, so you got seat bases underneath, um, transmission tunnels. We got firewall filler panels all boxed up. Chip's got them all ready to go. Oh, yeah, they're all labeled. <laughs> yep, yep, got them all labeled. Got walls full of tubs and more coming in every day. We started loading the trailer today for LST right. and uh, Reunion, so we're getting loaded up that, so that's why some of the inventory's gone. Yeah. And just, just more all the way around, just tubs and then... You wouldn't believe how many boxes it takes to do this kind oh, of stuff. How many different boxes you need. <laughs> yeah. like, and, and they're not small boxes either. You no. could fit a couple people yeah. in this one. Thousands of dollars worth of stuff that people are going to throw away. Right. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so we got boxes there. We got Chip packaging up somebody's boxes right there. All right. <laughs> um, sheet metal. We've been, for the last two months... We've been bead rolling and stocking sheet metal. Now you do you do all the sheet metal work at the house, right? You have Correct. A shop at your I, house? I have it laser cut and then I bead roll everything at, at the house. Right. Chip Chip draws all my patterns on it for me and I awesome. bead roll it. And yeah. Back here we're like I said, we're getting stocked up for show season. Golly, we got yeah. battery trays, seats, more battery trays, cup holders getting ready to get boxed up. Yeah. Shirts. More sheet metal. <laughs> yeah, all, man. All, all kinds of sheet metal. That is crazy, dude. All kinds of seats all boxed up, ready to go. Yeah, yeah. Sub boxes starting <laughs> yeah, uh, sure. to get ready there, yep. I've seen these in some finished trucks, man, and they are sweet, Thank dude. you, thank you. Yeah, yeah. We're building some seats right here. And yeah. More boxes. <laughs> all the consumables. <laughs> more storage. <Yeah. laughs> Here's the only little uh, little fun spot in here is the office. So, Sorry. okay, I got the office here. <laughs> I finally got a place to hang up some of my oh, fun okay. toys and stuff. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Cloud nine. That'll, <laughs> that's going to be back soon, right? Yes, yeah, soon, 5. soon. Yeah. Speaking of boxes that are done. Oh, oh yeah, you got a, one right here. There's a nice upholstered one for three tens. That is perfect, man. Oh. Well, that's about it. Yeah, that's awesome, I, man. That's about everything. So a lot of this stuff's for trucks. Yes, sir. But you have a car. Yes, I do. I want to talk about that, man. So, yeah. Let's, yeah. Talk, let's, let's, <laughs> let's go look at this thing. When my wife was pregnant with my son, my youngest, mm -hmm. Harrison, we had a 79 911. Oh, you, you had one before. Yeah. Oh, okay. So it's always been my car that got away. Yeah. And Chip over there is a big... Poor, or a big Volkswagen nut, and yeah. I've always been a Volkswagen nut, and this is, my opinion, the ultimate Volkswagen, so. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so, that is the ultimate Volkswagen. So here's my uh, my start to my uh, Porsche journey. Golly, I bet man, this is. Getting it all stripped and ready to go, and then so just this, collecting parts. So, so is this gonna be like a body kit? Where it's so, gonna, where no, is that? this is, uh, I, I'm opposed to body kits. Okay. So, <laughs> so it's going to be. So this is going to be welded on. Uh -huh. This is how you make a turbo, turbo look Porsche. This is yeah. turbo 930 turbo flares. So they'll be welded on. I got you. And smoothed in. Yeah. Yeah. Funny fact that uh, like the front fenders from Porsche, the 930 fenders that are flared. Yeah. Porsche welded those flares onto those cars. It wasn't stamped with a flare in it. <laughs> so they, just basically like you're doing with this yeah, one? Yeah, okay. they, they did on the front. So yeah. on the back, you know, you could you could buy a whole 930 quarter that had the flare on it. Right. But on the front, they took the stock fenders and welded flares onto them. So, That's crazy. And I've got a set of them at the house. Yeah. And yeah. it's amazing. I, I stripped the paint on the outside. 
you cannot see one spot on the outside where there's a seam. Really? On the inside, when you strip the undercoating, you can see where it's welded. Yeah. But on the outside, it's Perfect. like some true craftsmanship. It's, yeah. it's pretty impressive. Oh, so this car is going to be nuts, man. Oh, and it's going to be you fun. just got this piece, too. Yeah, I just got it's my just... new carbon fiber front bumper. Oh so, gosh. so this is a 77, but we're backdating it to look like a 73, 72. Oh, okay. okay. And so. Very cool. So, yeah. So, it's we switched it over to the long hood that the early cars had and yeah. all of the stuff to make it look like an older car. Yeah. Basically, I love Singer design, and that's oh, what yeah, we're yeah. making it a Singer-style car. Got it. You know? So it's going to be wild, man. It, it's it's going to be a fun match to Cloud 9. Yeah. So. 9.5, right? Yes. <laughs> Cloud 9.5 and Cloud 911 are going to be matching. Yeah. Oh, Paint, that's gonna interiors, be, yeah. everything. That's so, going to be beautiful, man. It's going to be a, a fun combo. Heck, yeah. Well, Mike, I definitely appreciate you hey, showing me around. Thank you so much. I got 17 hours home, man. So. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I do not envy that. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'll see you at LST, <laughs> Thank you brother. for coming by. Yes, sir. All right, man. See you, man. <laughs>Super fun people. Wish I was hanging out tonight, but I got to hightail it back to Florida. Also, I'm only like a mile from Oklahoma, so I'm gonna go even further west, go to Oklahoma, and then start my drive home because that makes so much sense. Welcome to Oklahoma! Okay, let's turn around. Welcome to Arkansas! Now we can officially start our drive back to the house. Maps got me at about 1,135 miles. At first it was trying to take me through the south eastern corner of Arkansas, but now it's taking me through Memphis. Um, should, should save about half an hour. So I actually like this route better because the route I was gonna go was gonna be a lot of highways and I was worried that I was gonna be driving through you know, these little small towns at night which can get a little sketchy. So this way I'll be on mainly interstate and I can pull off at a rest area. Well, I will feel a lot better about sleeping right there. Getting on the interstate. This is the first interstate I've been on since I've been in Arkansas since Tuesday. And today is Friday. <laughs> Woo, it's good to see them wide open lanes again. Just fueled up, I'm gonna grab some food from this Loves. I'm actually in my uh, you're my hometown about 10 miles away, but I'm in Lone Oak County, which is where, uh, where I live, where I grew up in, uh, Little Rock, literally like 30 minutes that way, but got a long night tonight. It's only like 7:30, or it's going to be a late one. I don't even know what time I'm going to call it. I'm just going to keep going until I can't go anymore, but I got to get some freaking food. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> so that happened. It's like 12.30 and uh, the inner sidewall on my front driver's side tire just separated. The truck started pulling really hard to the driver's side out of nowhere. And uh, I slowed down and literally just pulled over as soon as I could. And at least I got space, this is an off ramp, but let's see if we can see this thing. Oh, oh my God. This was worse than the dually, dude. The whole sidewall's separated. The whole thing came off. I just checked all the tires at the gas station too. How does that one look? It's okay. Oh my God.
the whole sidewall came off. Like, the, all the way around. Oh. Now I gotta check my back tires. That's okay. Uh-oh. Maybe not that one. I think this has been low on air for a little while because of the way the sidewall feels. It, it's not like when the dually blew the tire. Oh, look at that, it's smoking. Oh my goodness. Wow. All right. It just failed. <laughs> The sidewall just blew out like this. The whole sidewall is war and soft. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to I'm going to mark this one under uh, my bad. And uh, guess who gets to fix it? Whoa, don't fall on the road. Still like 600 miles from home. I, I do know if I run into trouble, I got some friends in Georgia. I should be able to make it there. You know, these wheels and tires look really cool, but I might need to reevaluate using these on longer trips. I just think it's too, it might just be too much, too much of a risk. But I'm glad I made it for the purpose of making it out there. I don't even know what I'm saying, I'm tired. I was thinking like what about talking to you guys about road tripping these old cars and trucks. <clears throat> Would you keep it down? I'm trying to do a video. <sighs> these truckers don't even care. And uh, you know, like this road trip, it really like had to, it, I couldn't miss. <laughs> I had to be there. Doing the extra stuff is, you know, going to see the Loshes and all that, it's fun, you know, but I had to be there for my family. And I know this Blazer can do that. When you start talking about 2,000 mile road trip on these tires, yeah. Would this be in the second time this has happened? I think uh, I might have a different set of wheels go on for long road trips. Not a big deal. We got a spare. We just got to get home, that's all. So when you jack these trucks up, you put it right on the fender right here. No, don't do that. Yeah, I'm gonna be here a while. That's gonna take a minute. I feel like I need to turn off my lights. Last thing I need is like, have the truck die. I guess I could leave it running. Maybe I'll do that. Yeah, I feel better about that. Hope the e-brake will come back off. Haven't tested that before. I'm glad I got that protein shake at Love's. Gave me the energy to do this. Uh, yeah. 
the whole daggum tire, dude, just separated. That is a stupid mistake on my part. I'm trying to see if maybe it got a nail or something in it. Doesn't look like it. I put the PSI up to 40 on it too before we left, but I didn't check it. I hadn't checked it today. Oh, the, the OG US Mag C10s, bro. Might have to jack her up a little more. This tire is actually a tire, not part of a tire. Was that a good angle? I wouldn't think so. Bringing it down is supposed to be easier. Shoot. All right, let's get this thing aired up. Get out of here. This night keeps on getting better. So like I said, the rear tire was a little low. That when the trucks drive over that bridge, it sounds really weird. All right, uh, so I got this one aired back up. Listen to this. Hear that? The valve stem is like not sealing. I don't know if it's seated all the way or it's not seated all the way. Is it cut? Oh yeah, it is right there. Yep. The, it's coming out around, it's coming out around the, it's coming out right here. Let me zoom out a little bit. Beep. Right there. It's like going in between. Shoot. So now I gotta replace this. God dang it. Well, this light's like, basically dead so this is why you carry random stuff like this with you this is a valve stem removal and replacement tool so we can dig out the old one and put in a new one uh, let's go ahead and get it out got to take out our Schrader valve which sucks because we just spent all that time airing it up let that air down. So I bet you, I bet you that that valve stem on that other tire has the same issue. Don't you guys want to road trip your stuff, man? With like your cool wheels and all that. All right, so with this, you gotta be really careful. You don't want to scratch your, uh, your rim up, but we can sneak this in behind the valve stem. It does take a lot of effort. Turn around and hook it, and then we can pull it. All right, so. Valston uh, tour, which I didn't want to happen. But sometimes it happens, and you know what? If it falls in there, then it falls in there. There we go. Yep, I got it. There it is. These are brand new valve stems too. We'll grab a shorty. And I don't think I have any lube. Oh yeah, we do right here. So we're gonna need our lubrication, our new valve stem. And 
administrator valve. Yep, and we'll need these things right here. Sorry, I'm, I've got to use my uh, camera as a light because somehow I forgot all my lights, man. And the ones I do have died on me. What can you see here? Take your valve stem, stick it in this piece right here. Get a little lube on it, some lubrication. You slide it into this tube. You don't want to slide it all the way through yet. You just want to get it down to the end there. And then we're going to take this handle on the end of this piece. All right, so that's the setup. And then you take your valve stem. I don't know. I don't know if it's going to work on this one. It better. I don't have a choice now. All right, this might take a couple tries. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna try to get this piece sitting there. So the part that goes around the valve stem is pretty tight. I might just have to try to stick it in there without this. We're gonna, it's gonna, this is gonna work. We're gonna make this work, I promise. I don't have a choice. This has to work. Oh, it's close. That lube is luby. Come on, meow. Dang, that was close. Did we bend it? Oh, it's gonna be a problem. All right, well, sorry, I just, I forced it in. <laughs> I tapped it in, I think. Oh, is it split? Yeah, yeah guys, we got a problem. Is that split? I think it is. Shoot, we might have to pull the tire and break the bead. Mm, not what I wanted to do tonight, in the middle of the night, in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. Okay, so this, is, this one's a little different. It's not as big. All right, let's try this one. So the... This valve stem is gonna be longer, but the bulb is uh, shaped a little differently. So let's see if that helps us at all. Okay, what's going on? It's almost there. It's like right freaking there. So close, dude. All right, I'm gonna try to shave the edge of this off a little bit to fit the way that this metal shaped around the opening. All right, I got it shaved up a little bit. She can kind of sit in there a little better. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Oh my gosh. All right. <sighs> anyway, so now that the, this uh, um, handle is attached to the valve stem. We could pull it through just like that. Now I'm ready to air it back up. Oh my gosh. What a night. 1.30 in the morning. Started out at 35. Oh, what a night. Oh, what a night. Oh, what a night. Don't you guys want to do this? in your old car or truck, man, on the side of the road, in the middle of Alabama, 1.30 in the morning. It's no place I'd rather be. A little pump just finished and now, no air leakage. All right. You think the truck will start? Where's my key? 
keys at. I got a stamp key fob. All right. Let's hope it's going to start. I can't have any more surprises tonight. I got to make it another 100 miles. It's uh it's like 2 o'clock in the morning now. And I'm starting to feel it. So sorry if I seem out of it. I'm just tired. You know, it's just really hard to do this. Oh, turn on the lights. You know, the best part about this is uh, stuff's falling. The, uh, oh, hey, there you are. The tire smells absolutely terrible. It doesn't smell like burning rubber. It smells like somebody lit the rubber on fire and then defecated in a bucket and threw the bucket on the, the tire fire to put it out. That's what it smells like in the blazer right now. Fun fact, I flipped the seat up and got the back ready. Probably gonna be sleeping back there in about 30 minutes. I don't think I'm making it that 100 or whatever miles. No pulling, so hopefully no more surprises. Come on, guys. Well, good morning from somewhere west of Birmingham. I, uh, I didn't sleep too bad last night. I think if I had the right pillow with me, I was sleeping on my hoodies. <laughs> and uh, if I had a little, uh, like one of those camping blow up air mattresses, I might be able to, to make that work. After my experience last night, I don't think I want to do that. It's kind of sad waking up in the morning and seeing who's sleeping in the cars around you. Uh, checked all the tire pressures, we're all good. Checked all the valve stems, we're all good. Checked all the fluids, we're all good. Truck does kind of want to pull a little bit. Feels like a wheel bearing, but they feel solid when you give them a little. And they are new wheel bearings. I put them on 10,000 miles ago. It should be okay. Yep, last night was self-induced. Um, adding a new thing to my checklist, checking valve stems. Didn't think that was something that I really had to check that often, but those are brand new valve stems. Anyway, I'm about eight hours from home. Just gonna hightail it there, and uh, I'm ready to take a shower and relax a little bit. Today sucks. Like the weather's nasty. Also made a new friend at the gas station. His name is Robert, and he's telling me about his GMC Sonoma, and uh, telling me about how he uh, used to detail cars and stuff. Nice fella. He was a cook at McDonald's, so it's cool talking to random people about stuff. Because sometimes it's nice. Sometimes it's sometimes it's weird morning it was very nice but anyway I got to get driving let me flip the camera around to show you guys the views this morning just a dreary Saturday morning the hills are pretty though
was a tough trip. Oh, man. I made it, guys. And gals. Um, let's do a walk around of the truck just to, like, take note of what happened to it this go around. Before we do that, I want to say I've been thinking a lot on this road trip and thinking about a lot about what I'm doing with this channel. If a lot of a lot of you guys and gals reach out to me and say, oh man, I wish I could drive my classic to this show, or I wish I could go do that, or oh man, I'm just so jealous you get to do that. Like, my message to you is you're never gonna regret doing it. But you will always regret not doing it. If you don't do it, and you never try it, you're always going to be like, oh man, I wish I could go to Dino's, you know, I wish I could drive across the country. Like, dude, you can. You just have to hop in the vehicle and go. If you're not mechanically inclined, you know, get with a good mechanic and have them do a walk around, make sure everything's good. If you are mechanically inclined, just be smart about what tools you bring. Because I'm telling you, if I didn't have that valve stem removal tool and a spare tire, I would have been in Alabama still. Because I'm pretty sure uh, nothing was open at 2 a.m. But also, who knows if they even would be able to get me what I need to be able to fix the truck to get it back on the road. Anyway, you got to take chances in life. And that's exactly what I'm doing with this channel. And I'm feeling it, man. Like, I would regret not trying to make this a thing and always wonder, well, what if? I don't want to think what if when I'm on my deathbed. I don't want to think what if when I'm like, you know, if I, if this channel doesn't work, it's like, okay, well, I gave it my best and it didn't work. And I'm okay with that. Cause regardless of what happens with the channel, I'm still going to build modifying road trip, these classic cars and trucks all over the country. That's not changing. The only thing that would change is the video editing and video production to bring you guys and gals these videos. I would probably just more so do it for myself. I might actually get more done, to be honest with you. Anywho, let's do a walk around of this Blazer, man. This thing is a little beat up today. So when I was at uh, the last fuel stop, I noticed this. That sucks. So I also noticed that the uh, door is pretty loose. Uh, and we have some rust coming through right here. I think it's just getting worse. So, so that's fun. You know what? Our, our tape actually held up really well. This stuff is on there, man. Um, I didn't have any leaks when it was raining, but we didn't have like a really hard rain. So it's hard to, hard to tell. Look at the tire combination. I mean, I'm going to have to ride around like this for a while, but is this what the cool kids are doing now? Oh, we lost a wheel weight. Looks like my six-year-old's mouth right now, missing some teeth. Also, I know I said it before, but I love just how dirty this truck is, man. This would be a cool, like, stripe kit, you know? Maybe I'll take a mental note of that. Of course, you got that paint chip up front. That's good. Anything over here? Yeah, I got that one going to Atlanta one year. I think I showed you all that earlier. Uh, oh yeah, it's our new valve stem. How's that doing? I've been I started checking them at every stop. It's still not leaking, so that's good. Yeah, she's dirty. This whole back glass was basically like this, just super dirty. But you got to clean it because when you roll it down, it'll scratch the glass. Not too bad. We got some work to do to it before we take her on the GM tailgate tour in a couple of months. All right, guys and gals, it's going to do it for me on this one. Again, take a chance. Take your classic on a road trip. You're not going to regret it. Maybe I'll see you out at that show you take it to. And you know what's funny is this wasn't even about a car show. It was just about a dude taking a road trip on his truck. And the other thing I wanted to say was this was a can't miss road trip. So I have so much confidence in this Blazer. This is one of the ones I would literally drive across the country, but I couldn't miss my uncle's funeral. You know, we wanted to celebrate his life and thinking a lot about him, that's what made me kind of think about 
not wasting this life. You know, if you want to do something, pursue it, go after it. Even if it's not cars and trucks, whatever it is. If you take away anything from this video, try something that you've always wanted to do. Who knows, it might actually work out. I definitely appreciate you hanging around and watching this video. I'll see you guys in the next one.